So a couple of weeks ago, I came across a New York Times article about a Chinese watch that took a prize at GPHG, which is also known as the Swiss Oscars for watches. The category that it won in was called the Challenge Prize, and this is aimed at watches below 3,500 Swiss francs or about $3,800. Now, to give you some context, this award in the prior year went to the Black Bay 58, so it's a competitive field. Well, I've got the Sega Blue Planet right here. So let's take a look at what's so special about this watch with no hands. Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. Are you intimidated to post on watch forums? Do you hate flame wars? Well, you belong on watchcrunch.com, the best online community for watches. So the Sega Design Blue Planet is the brainchild of industrial designer John Jianmin. Sega was founded in 2013 and is based in Shenzhen, China, a place better known for making iPhones than watches. Sega's other models are typically skeletonized square designs, but Mr. Zhang claims to have been working on this concept for the Blue Planet since the inception of the company. This watch uses what he calls asynchronous follow, which means that the center globe rotates every 12 hours while the inner minute ring does a rotation every 60 minutes. To tell the time, you look for this navigational star and line it up with the minute and hour wheels. This is easier said than done, and it took me a couple of days to get the hang of it. The Blue Planet design was inspired by, well, the tiny blue orb hurtling through space that we all call home. It's said that with the backdrop of the global pandemic and ongoing environmental degradation, this watch beckons us to preserve the only home that we have. That's an admirable theme, and it reminds me of the description of the Earthrise from the lunar surface by NASA astronauts. The globe is full of details, although it does take an Asia-centric perspective. Sega calls the finishing microcarved, which to my untrained eyes looks like a cast piece that has some surface hand finishing done to it. But at high magnification, it's still full of topographic details that reminds me of why I loved my ninth grade geography class so much. The striking design is less about telling the time and more about an artistic statement. A domed sapphire crystal encapsulates this diorama of the world and transitions seamlessly at the edge to the curvature of a rounded titanium case. The watch sits at 46 millimeters wide, which sounds alarming on paper, but there are no lugs to speak of and the straps are mounted inboard of the case, making the quote unquote lug to lug measurement the same 46 millimeters. And it actually wears pretty well on my six and a half inch wrist. Guys, please take a second and drop a like for this video, especially if you like these occasional detours off the beaten path. Now, of course, the Blue Planet is not the first watch to tell time without the need of hands. When I posted a picture of it on Watch Crunch, people reminded me of other interesting designs from Bradley, uh, who uses small ball bearings and magnets to sort of pull them around the watch face, uh, designed for the visually impaired, as well as examples from Cartier, Cloakers, and others. These watches are not going to be mass market items, but I do appreciate the creativity and the courage to challenge traditional ways of reading time. And unlike creations from MBNF or Richard Mill, this watch is going to be priced at $1,500 to $2,000. Now, when I asked Sega about this movement, I was told it's an independently developed automatic whatever that means. It has 40 hours of power reserve, 30 joules, runs at four hertz, and is accurate to minus 15 to plus 30 seconds a day. So it's not a chronometer, but what are you gonna expect at this price? Operating it is pretty cool as you can rapidly rotate the globe while watching the minute track fly around it. But I did notice that the crown has a ghost first position, indicating that this was intended for a date function that doesn't exist here. Kind of a bummer on a watch that otherwise seems so thought out. 
Frankly, I was afraid to put this watch on my wrist. I thought it would look silly at its size. But the combination of the case shape, the lug design, as well as a comfortable silicon strap makes it rather doable. I mean, don't get me wrong, it still feels like wearing a museum piece or maybe a pocket watch on your wrist, but it's a statement for sure. And I guess that's sort of the point. So what are my impressions of the Sega Design Blue Planet? I think it's a rather innovative design with an environmental undertone, all executed in a nice package for a great price. Now, some of you will roll your eyes and go back to looking at Black Bay 58s, but for others, including the judges at GPHG, this watch is a winner. But let's continue this discussion on watchcrunch.com. We built Watchcrunch because we wanted a platform that was built from the ground up for watch content. A place that combines the best of IG, traditional forms, all with a positive vibe. So come check it out. I'll put a link to a thread on this watch in the pinned comments below. As always, great chat, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.